Hi guys, welcome, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nia, this is Nia Etc, where I teach you guys how to sew, how to style yourselves, and and all of my other fashion-y things that I like to do. Today is the start of a new series, the Sewing Starter Guide. I wanna teach you guys all the most essential information to learn how to sew and to create good looking pieces as a beginner. So this is for the very, 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 very beginners who wanna learn the basics of sewing machines, learning about the terminology for sewing, about the tools that you might use and a couple of techniques for the very beginners. So let's get started with the fashion fundamentals for sewing beginners. We can start with the terminology. Um, I'm gonna give you guys some very, very basic terminology for when you start to sew or if you're watching any sort of videos on YouTube, of like how do I, what is like of tutorials and whatever on YouTube, here are some basic words and terms that you're gonna hear and you're gonna need to know the meanings of. So we're starting off with seam allowance. Seam allowance is the space between the fabric edge and your seam that you're sewing. It is fundamental to know your seam allowance because that can change a lot about your pattern and a lot about the project that you are making. Next is a pattern. A pattern is a template of pieces that you're gonna make, that you're gonna cut out of your fabric to make your project. So if we're making a tote bag, there's gonna be several pieces that you need to cut out to sew together to make your tote bag. The seam is the line where two pieces of fabric are sewn together. So like the seam, you're gonna see the seam because it's the pieces that are put together. So like, yeah. I'll put a picture up for all of these to demonstrate because I feel like I'm explaining them bad, but also I might not be. So like pictures will help. Anyhow. And then my next terminology piece is going to be closures. Closures is the closures is the finishing touches to your garment. So that'll be things like zippers, buttons, hook and eye, um, frogs, uh, elastic, and so many other ways that you can closure that you can use as a closure for your projects um and then finally the hem the hem is a finished edge of your pieces so like most clothes that you have have a finished edge i don't think anything i'm wearing today has a finished hem but that is also a different way to finish your hems that's not important right now we'll talk about that later but yeah the hem is the finished edge of a garment where it's usually rolled once or twice and sewn over top of it to prevent fraying on your piece and make it look professional and finished. Next are tools. These tools are going to be vital for sewing because they're gonna help you so much down the line when it comes to all of your projects that you're gonna make. Um, so let's start with the basics, the very simple fabric scissors. Fabric scissors and fabric shears. Fabric scissors and fabric shears are sharp scissors specifically made for cutting. Fabric shears are specific scissors that help prevent your fabrics from fraying. They're different, but they're very similar. I like to use fraying, no, I like to use fabric shears on fabrics that are going to fray a lot. I would show you a example but none of my examples are here right now um so you're often going to use these on like silks and whatnot and use that to make sure that your fabric does not fray at all um because sometimes your fabrics will just fray without any sort of like nothing crazy but you're going to want to use fabric scissors as opposed to paper scissors when it comes to cutting your fabric to make sure that your cuts are sharp and precise and specific because that is so important when it comes to sewing. Our next tool is a seam ripper. Hopefully you won't have to use it a lot, but every well, every sew, every sewer, sewist, everyone who sews is gonna end up using it. Eventually, I know I use it a lot. It is the seam ripper. Seam ripper is a tool that you use to easily remove 
seams, stitches, seams, both, and correct mistakes. Um, it's got a little ball on one end and then like a needle-ish thing on the other end. And you use that to like basically cut straight through whatever seam that you just made. A measuring tape. A measuring tape is a tool that you use accurately measure fabrics, accurately measure your body, um, accurately, accurately measure someone else's body for products that you might be making. So if you're making clothes, you're gonna use the fabric, you're gonna use the measuring tape a lot more often than if you're making like items because you can just use a ruler. It's actually more helpful if you do use a ruler for those type of projects. I'm gonna get off my stepping stool or whatever they call it. Next is Taylor's Chalk fabric markers and like fabric pins. Those are gonna be used. Mark fabric patterns and guidelines on your projects that you're making. It's gonna be essential because when you do start making your projects on, with like patterns and whatnot, you're gonna to wanna to mark the specific marks that they have on the pattern onto your fabric. So you're able to replicate them perfectly, properly, amazingly on your project. Who I have are pins and needles. Pins and needles are different. I'm not gonna, ex you know, I'm not gonna go into anything crazy about how they're different things and da da da. But specific, but basically, pins are sharp metal pieces that are used to hold fabric together or mark certain markings on your projects and then a needle is a pin with a hole in the bottom of it that you thread thread through i okay i said the exact same thing to be able to sew fabric by hand they are different i don't really care but i know my teachers and classes care a lot so i'm gonna say it once and then maybe forget later Next is a pin cushion or a magnetic pin holder. I prefer magnetic pin holder because it's more helpful, especially when it comes to picking up your needle, your, 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 your pins, not needles. See, I already did it. Um, that, those are used to hold your pins and your needles whenever you're not using them and just prevent them from falling over your floor and stabbing all your feet, like mine do in my carpet. Um, next is the, finally actually, is the thread and the bobbin. Thread and bobbin is a long strand of material on a spool used to help sewing. And the thread is usually bigger, bobbin is much smaller, and it goes in the bottom of your sewing machine, which we will go over in a later video down the road. Perfect. Now that we've gotten through the tools and the terminology let's go over a couple of techniques that I use to make my projects that I think will be very helpful for you guys to learn now and not down the road so your projects look even more professional even as a beginner the first technique is a straight stitch learning how to do a straight stitch will make your projects look fantastic it is actually the base of most of this sewing that you're ever gonna do you're almost always going to be doing straight stitches. You're not always going to be doing, doing doing zigzags and you know all the crazy little things that are on the side of your machine. You're usually just going to do a straight stitch. And then later on this later on in this video, I'm going to have a couple of resources as well as my own personal sewing exercises that you guys can print out on your own and use for your own practice so yeah after straight stitching is backstitch backstitch is the most important thing for you to do to make sure your projects don't fall apart because when you are sewing and if you cut both sides of the threads that seam can unravel if you straight stitch I mean well yeah if you straight stitch and then you do a backstitch a couple stitches and then go back forward and finish your stitch <coughs> that will actually create a knot basically for your projects and prevent your project from unraveling unraveling at the end and falling apart next 
and final most important one that I think needs an entire other video which I will probably make down the road is pressing. Pressing your seams is crucial to make sure that your projects have a professional look at the end. I never used to press my press my seams um, and then all my stuff looked crazy. But once I started doing that, even though the project didn't look amazing, um, because I'm not always great, the it already looked so much more professional because I did press the seams. So yeah. And then as I said before, I have a couple of resources down below of um, sewing exercises that you guys can do to practice sewing before you start making your projects. Um, they start off with straight lines, boxes, uh, stars, curved lines, circles, and then seam allowance, and all of those amazing pieces to help you get the fundamentals of the sewing. Um, if you guys want, I can make a video on like sewing exercises you can do and sewing projects you can make as a very, very, very beginner. I think that's a great idea. I think that might be what I do. So yes, now that we've gone over all the very important things like the terminology, tools, techniques, and practices that you guys can do, start thinking of projects you wanna do as a new beginner sewer. And if you want to comment them down below, I'm going to be reading all of your guys' comments and seeing the things that you guys want to make. And maybe we'll make some projects together. Yeah. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you guys are enjoying sewing or you want to learn more about sewing, don't be afraid to subscribe. I would really enjoy that. Um, and yeah. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye.